Dear medicos, let us have a discussion on the ENT MCQ again in an integrated way. I am teaching you on the current pattern like the examiner is giving you a lengthy MCQ which we have even seen in the last neat examination. 5-6 line MCQ with image are given just to build up a pressure on you. Are you getting this point? But focus on the basic keywords if i focus on the keywords i can crack this mc and what i have done i have highlighted all those points which you should concentrate in the examination hall so one by one we'll read all these words 20 year old female complaining of foul smelling purulent nasal discharge with apostaxis two important finding i am giving you in the first line Purulent nasal discharge with apostaxis on examination nasal cavity is full of foul smelling crust painless nodules are there with disfigured hard external nose now concentrate if i just focus on one term that is your disfigured external nose i can make a spot diagnosis that is your rhinoscleroma i mean if i go with the keyword of hard no woody nose if the word woody nose is there always remember this point it is for rhinoscleroma so the examiner instead of giving the word woody he is writing the word disfigured so this is the most important word in the mcq with which we can crack the mcq foul smelling whenever the foul smelling purulent nasal discharge is there i have three options in my mind the importance of class notes classroom learning when you revise the notes four or five times in the examination hall all these things should click purulent nasal discharge the first option comes atrophic rhinitis which the examiner have given as a b option or it can be atrophic rhinitis or it can be rhinoscleroma even in the rhinoscleroma we have very foul smelling discharge the third option comes foreign body just one by one but if the examiner doesn't mention the unilateral word we can rule out foreign body unilateral purulent discharge no second thought answer have to be foreign body but in this examiner is saying foul smelling purulent discharge unilateral not mentioned it can be atrophic rhinitis or rhinoscleroma are you getting this point but on examination the examiner clearly say okay, there is a hard external nose woody nose the word woody the importance of keyword conceptual learning woody word in ENT we use only for two patients either we can use for Ludwig abscess there is some submandibular abscess below the chin so there will be woody swelling below the chin or when I touch the nose in rhinoscleroma we get a woody nose so this this point go in the favor of rhinoscleroma are you getting this point biopsy show infiltration now this is the current pattern and what we people will advise you on the platform this online platform what damn people we are giving you a strong message whenever the pattern changes only those students will dominate who will adapt with the pattern instead of asking patho micro or mcqs they are asking integrate they are giving you a slide of patho in which they have mentioned the biopsy is showing you abundant sub epithelial histiocytes they are showing you miculis cell they are showing you miculis cell which is again going in the favor of rhinoscleroma are you getting my concept so with the help of patho finding one logic is given eosinophils russell bodies abundant sub epithelial histocytes your macrophages are there in this biopsy this go again in the favor of a granulomatous condition of the nose that is rhinoscleroma so examiner is giving you clue at the three level one is symptoms is foul swelling second examination on examination this is woody swelling and the third point is giving a patho finding. Am I understandable? Are you getting this point? So this topic go, this diagnosis go in the favor of rhinoscleroma. Now when you examine, even if I don't read the question, if I just examine the slide, the first is foul smell, the crust is there, followed by we have given you biopsy. So just if you focus on this slide, we can directly jump on rhinoscleroma. If I remove this slide, histopath slide, foul smelling crust are there. It can be atrophic rhinitis or rhinoscleroma. But now comes, what is the key word for atrophic rhinitis? Now one by one, atrophic rhinitis, examiner will give you, patient is coming to you with obstruction, nasal obstruction. On examination, there is a foul smelling crust scene. Now in here, the patient is given, 20 year old female with foul smelling nasal discharge it means that patient is telling you okay, i'm getting foul smell anosmia is not the finding try to appreciate this point in the very first line examiner is clearly demarking between atrophic rhinitis and rhinoscleroma if it would be nasal obstruction and apostaxis 
on examination foul smelling test matlab the patient means patient is not getting the smell we call it as merciful anosmia i think you are getting my message what i want to convey you if the examiner give you a message of merciful anosmia the diagnosis will be b option but when the patient is giving the history of foul smelling the b option is ruled out atrophic rhinitis just golden statement crust formation with anosmia is atrophic rhinitis but if there is a foul smelling with woody nose is your rhinosclenoma are you getting the message what is hypertrophic rhinitis hypertrophic rhinitis is the key word the every corner of the nose is hypertrophic when you examine we do nasal endoscopy they will be mulberry like nasal mucosa so if the examiner use a word reddish mucosa mulberry like mucosa mainly in fit turbinate is commonly involved in that scenario so we call it as hypertrophic rhinitis i think you're getting my point which keyword should be there in the mcq so that answer should go in the favor of hypertrophic rhinitis will be mulberry like nasal mucosa now coming on rhinospodiosis in rhinospodiosis they will clearly mention there is a polypodal mass red polypodal mass coming out of the nasal cavity so just clear demarcation between option a and d mulberry like nasal mucosa is hypertrophic rhinitis mulberry like nasal polyps if they use the word polypodal mass coming out of nose like reddish mass we go in the favor of rhinospodiosis so b and c are the very close differential and a and d are very close but difference is that is your mucosa will be hypertrophic but in rhinospodiosis there will be a red polypodal mass is coming one by one again rhinoscleroma is a granulomatous condition rhinospodiosis again granulomatous condition how to differentiate clear cut the foul smelling crust and all and uh, your obstruction hard woody nose along with that they can give you a clue in form of the distribution of the country like rhinoscleroma more common in the northern part of the country rhinospodiosis more common in the southern part are you getting this point so if they specify the patient coming from chennai or tamil nadu is mentioned in the mcq is a clue rhinospodiosis is exclusively seen in the tamil nadu so this is again a keyword why i'm teaching you in this way why i'm ruling out each and every option why i'm telling you the keyword take my words only those students will dominate who will focus to crack this mcq in 30 to 40 second is a lengthy question but if we apply the logic we go to crack within 30 seconds clear so time management even you will agree with me last need that time management was the key clear coming back how to treat this patient of rhinoscleroma so first of all we uh, diagnose with the help of history then biopsy then what is the treatment which infection is associated so we say clepsila is there because clepsila is there so we go for streptomycin your tetracycline whether it is atrophic rhinitis or rhinoscleroma just remember clepsila is associated with both of the conditions so that drug of choice if we go with the treatment of choice will be your streptomycin tetracycline no doubt in atrophic rhinitis we clean the nose we can do surgical procedure like injection of teflon in the lateral wall but in rhinoscleroma we have the mainly medical treatment am i understandable rhinospodiosis there is a polypodal mass red mass so we have to do surgery so in d option the management is always always surgery so i am ruling out first we make the diagnosis of all the four option then i am telling you the treatment option hypertrophic rhinitis treatment will be laser laser excision we use ktp laser but at titanium phosphate laser atrophic rhinitis will be the medical treatment followed by cleaning the nose along with we will go for surgeries like in old time we used to do young's operation modified young's operation but now we are doing injection of teflon in the lateral wall what we call it as lotton's laser surgery in rhinoscleroma the treatment option will be medical treatment again streptomycin tetracycline rhinospodiosis just remember one point the treatment is surgical excision surgical excision but it bleed a lot so what is mandatory your central institute can raise a mcq on this point cautery at the base is mandatory cautery at the base is mandatory are you getting this point now coming on the right answer right answer to this question go in the favor of rhinoscleroma rhinoscleroma clear now which are the other points which i want k you should be aware in this rhinoscleroma we have its important stages like in atrophic state the patient will be having crust formation foul smelling discharge sometimes they use a word carpenter glue carpenter glue word is used for a discharge in the rhinoscleroma in granulation nodular stage you get painful painless nodule on the nasal mucosa along with we get a hebra nose so is a expansion of the ante part of the nose this type the image i am showing is a hebra nose typical hebra nose or we can get a 
typical image of tapid nose like this type of nose we call it as T A P I R tapid nose this is again a finding of rhinoscleroma this stage can lead to respiratory distress are you getting this one so these are the important points which i want to discuss with you with the help of this clinical mcq again a strong message beta like pattern is now changed just focus more on the integrated learning rather than reading the subject it is always better to read topic basic topic basic sciences should be on your tips and then with the help of keywords you crack the difficult questions clear very best of luck we we'll stop at this point thank you